Things continue to get worse when we're talking about the projections for Milton going into Florida. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're, of course, going to update you on the latest when it comes to the modeling, the track, some of the impacts coming to Florida. But then we're also going to touch on why this is such a weird moving system from west to east out of the Gulf. No, the weather is not being modified. We're going to address that issue that has come about over the last couple of weeks, and especially with this system closer to the end of the video, but we are going to get into the important stuff first. So here we go as of about 9.30 on Sunday morning, October 6th. Unfortunately, the storm looks very, very healthy. You can clearly see where the center is. I'm going to bust out the telestration. It is right in through here, and we've got more cumulonimbus towers firing along it. There's likely going to be a period of extremely rapid intensification, one that could see this storm achieve Category 4 or Category 5 status by the time it's north or just northeast of the Yucatan Peninsula. So that's something that we are going to watch. Now with that said, there's likely going to be a period of weakening getting up into landfall. I'll show you all that stuff with the high resolution models coming up in just one second. In terms of the latest track, there hasn't been much change. This is the official forecast now from the National Hurricane Center. They still officially have it getting to a Category 3 in that area, but a lot of the hurricane models put this even higher, getting the pressure down into the 9-teens or the 9-20s. That's closing in on Strong Cat 4, Cat 5 status. We'll talk about that again in just one second. Here we go, though, with the latest projection. Again, not much has changed. The cone is still very, very wide. Again, that is the error for the forecast when the Hurricane Center draws their center line, and then they add the historical error to that. So really anywhere from about Cedar Key or just north of that, all the way down to Naples. In the most likely scenario, though, this is going to come ashore somewhere south of Cedar Key, and maybe as far south as Port Charlotte with the most likely being unfortunately closer to Bradenton, Sarasota, Tampa, maybe Newport, Ritchie in that area. Again, there's still some wiggle room. That's why impacts for these certain areas are gonna come into fruition as we get into Monday into Monday night. So look for more updates right here on those more localized impacts. This is still the broad view here, but nonetheless, the official forecast does have this coming ashore on the west coast of Florida as a major Category 3 hurricane, and then crossing the state as at least a Category 2, and then exiting as a Category 1 hurricane uh, somewhere on the Atlantic side of Florida. And where that exit is going to be huge for Atlantic Central Florida and Northeast Florida impacts, because to the north of where the storm exits, that's where we're going to have the opportunity for some big time storm surge and beach erosion there in the same places that were unfortunately impacted by hurricanes ian and nicole just a couple of years ago so there again is the satellite composite uh here are the latest spaghetti models that wanted to show you this again we always talk about the forecast process and some of the transparency so i want to show you guys and let you in on the forecasting side of this as well this is the latest when it comes to the early morning runs of Milton. This is going to be the windshield wiper effect. So yesterday we had some of these going north of Tampa Clearwater. Now we're south of Tampa Clearwater. Just for reference, a track south of Tampa, while not ideal, is certainly better for the Tampa Bay surge. So if you're in Tampa, if it goes south, you're not going to get the worst surge. If it goes towards like St. Pete, Clearwater, in that area, then our surge is maximized there. So just some nuances that I want you guys to know. And by the way, a um, couple of things of by the way, if you're finding this video helpful, we're gonna be live starting on Monday with these updates. We're gonna have the interactive Q&A thing as we always do. So if you're interested in that, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button as well so it allows YouTube to push this out so that you get some credible information. There's a lot of misinformation as we're gonna discuss at the end of this video when it comes to this storm. So it's important that we get some of this good, potentially life-saving information out. So do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button. The other thing, again, important to note is we're gonna see this kind of bounce north and south a little bit, the models. It's just important to know that um, we're gonna fine tune this as we get into Monday and certainly Tuesday. But if you're living along the Gulf Coast, you need to make sure you're starting your final preparations and listening to your local officials 
some of the surge that would come into the Gulf side, the West side, is uh, going to be unsurvivable, just like what we saw with Helene. And it's going to break some of the records that Helene just broke when it comes to the surge, especially if the track goes on the northern side of the bay. All right, so I want to show you a couple of hurricane models. We're going to pick this up Tuesday afternoon. You see there, 928 millibar uh, hurricane there. That's going to be approaching Cat 5 status on Tuesday afternoon. And we're going to take all of these out because I want to give you the outcomes here uh, from what we're kind of looking at. So you see, notice the pressure does come up though, okay? So it does come up, still a very strong 947, 945, uh, 951 at landfall, millibar low, major hurricane, no doubt about that. So that is the H wharf, the hurricane wharf. This is going to be the H Mon. This is another hurricane specialized model from, from NOAA. Um, 929, that's going to be a Cat 4, Cat 5. And then coming ashore a little bit further north, north of Newport Ritchie towards Homosassa. Um, as a 976, so it does have weakened significantly, but you'll also notice that it's also further north. We'll talk about why it's going north, and we'll talk about this weird motion coming up, but it feels the influence of the steering current more, and that steering current will also help to shear it up a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to go to the halves A. These are going to be the brand new Hurricane models. It's at 925 there, 923, 920, 911, 910, 905, uh, that is a formidable Category 5 hurricane right there if this is going to come into fruition. And you see where this one goes. It weakens it to a 962. So one thing I want to be clear about, when you see that this is going to be a Cat 4 or Cat 5, and if it does achieve that, note that there is going to be some likely weakening on approach. I also want to caution, though, that it's not going to weaken that much that the impacts are going to go away. This is going to be a very uh, nasty hurricane with the worst of the impacts north of the center. You see there's not a lot going on in the south. Some drier air is likely going to get wrapped into this. Uh, it's still going to be windy though. So you see it right there. This is going to be Thursday morning, by the way, at 4 a.m. So we're still looking at landfall late Wednesday, early Thursday into that ballpark with the worst of the weather Wednesday into Thursday for the Florida Peninsula. And then exiting, this is going to be about 11 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, October 10th. So this is going to be an October 9th to an October 10th situation. Halves B, little mean thing. This thing is tiny at this point. When they're small like this, they can be bullied very easily by the overall uh, steering currents. They can intensify extremely quickly. They can also weaken very quickly. So that's a 901, 902, 899. That would be insane. Um, we would see, we'll see if that happens. So this is going to be late Tuesday evening. So this is going to be during the day on Tuesday where it could go that ultra rapid intensification. Again, that's a, the term that it's even greater than that rapid intensification of, uh, of about 24, uh, 30 millibars in a 24 hour or 30 miles an hour, I should say in a 24 hour period. Um, then it comes weakening on approach, growing in size a little bit as it comes ashore anywhere from nine. 50 to 960 millibars. So again, the pressure does fill a little bit. It does rise a little bit, um, but that is still a major hurricane coming into, uh, at least according to Hafs B, the Tampa, uh, the Clearwater area. And again, the Hafs B is a worst case scenario for Tampa surge, by the way, um, because what we have going on here, we have our low right there. We have all of that water then being pushed in that direction. We have offshore flow north um, of that area of low pressure. So just a couple of things to know. Uh, again, we haven't seen anything like this. Nobody alive, I said this in yesterday's video, has seen a storm like this. 1921 is going to be the storm of record for Tampa. But even though, even then, this is completely different because of that track that I showed you. It's really, really weird. Okay. Now we're going to get into some of the soapbox stuff because there's a ton of misinformation uh, misinformation about that. Yes, this hardly ever happens. A west to east moving hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Typically, whenever we are looking at th this stuff, we are seeing the storm 
originate down here. Let me change my color of telestration because the water is blue. Around here, that is super wide. Um, but we are watching them come up kind of like an Ian did and work its way like this or like in Helene, like that, or like a Michael. So storms do go to the east. And if there is a time for storms to do that, it is right now in October. Late season storms stop coming off of Africa as much because we shut down the West African, African monsoon season for one. And then for two, we start to get the dips in the jet stream, which is the main driver of weather, and everything moves from west to east. Down here, because of the trades, they move uh, east to west. Up here, in the mid-latitudes, it's west to east. Okay, so you need to be familiar with how weather works before you say, oh, that's a weird storm. They are controlling the weather. It is impossible to make and put a hurricane somewhere in a given location. It is not to steal votes. Last time I checked, election day was in November. And last time I checked as well, California is dealing with a ton of wildfires. That is a blue state. So please, I beg you, stop the nonsense, stop the misinformation, and please focus on doing what you need to do to prepare yourself and to be ready to help others that are impacted by this storm. I promise you, it is impossible to create and steer a hurricane. All that stuff you see about the weather radars, no, that is a phenomenon that happens at night where it's picking up some ground clutter and it looks like that stuff. I promise you, all that stuff you're seeing is fake, okay? It is fake, 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 and it's going to be dangerous and people will believe it, but I promise you, trust me, that is not happening. The reason why we are seeing it um, go from west to east is uh, it's very simple. Here we go looking at the upper level pattern. And now that we're getting it stronger, there is the blue colors um, indicating the lower pressure anomaly. When a hurricane gets strong, the thunderstorms in it get very, very tall. And then they are susceptible to the upper level steering current. That's why we're looking at the upper levels now. So we have big chunk of high pressure right here, clockwise flow around high pressure. This is our main steering component right up in here. That is our upper low. And you're gonna watch these two, you're gonna notice the blues really start to come in here um, as we get further in time. So we're gonna take this out and notice how it's kind of slowly moving to the east. And as it gets stronger, we start to see a lot more blue in here. What is happening is the west to east flow coming around that trough just like that is helping to not only grab it and pull it to the north a little bit, but it's also, again, that west to east flow is helping to push it to the east. So what we had going on to kind of back up this, sto uh, back up this story just a little bit is we have that Central American gyre. We've talked about that at length over the past couple of weeks. It's a semi-permanent area of low pressure that develops early in the season and late in the season. We're late into the hurricane season, so we're seeing those uh, storms firing off. A lot of people have commented, how did this storm get so strong when we were talking about nothing? That was the pre-lobes of low pressure that were on the eastern side of this gyre. That's actually what Florida is being impacted by. That's what's bringing the rain on Sunday. The combination of those two lobes moving in. That's why we talked about it not developing. This is a brand new lobe that fired off of that Central American gyre right about in here. And as it did so, it then got impacted and will get impacted by that west-east flow that is much more prevalent in October. Because in June, July, and August, the jet stream is hanging up way up here and not influencing the weather in the deep south in the in the gulf of mexico um as we uh, until we get into october that's when we start to get cold fronts down into the deep south texas georgia louisiana alabama mississippi florida there's the front and then it helps to guide it and unfortunately steer it into the florida peninsula so it is my hope there that anybody watching this can tell their friends Yes, this is weird. We have not seen this happen since prior to 1900, okay? It has happened before, a hurricane moving east to west like that out of the Bay of Campeche into the west coast of Florida. 
but it was like 1886 or 1890, something like that. It was prior to 1900. This is the first time in 124 years or more that we have seen a hurricane do this. Very, very rare. No one alive today has ever seen anything through Central Florida like this. So I'll use my last little bit of time here before I run on to if you're anywhere in Florida Peninsula from the Big Bend to Jacksonville into Lake Okeechobee, Fort Lauderdale, make sure you're doing your preparations. There, there's going to be some wiggle room, okay? There's going to be some wiggle room in the track but it's going to come at a time where it's going to be too late to make your preps. I just stocked up on stuff. I will be at work for probably 72 hours straight. We're all going to be sleeping at the station um, to keep you guys informed. We're going to have live streams going. ClickOrlando.com slash hurricane is going to be your, uh, your friend for any of your checklists. Go there and also the best information possible. And then also, uh, if you're from the greater Central Florida area, on News 6, uh, as... We start our coverage. We're not going to stop again because this is this could end up being one of the worst hurricanes that the Central Florida area has ever seen. Um, up there with the likes of Irma's and Charlie's and Ian's. Each storm is different. This one's going to be different as well. Um, but this one has a chance to be a very very mean hurricane. So please listen to your local officials, especially on the west coast of Florida. As I ramble on, but again, just one more time, this is born out of thunderstorms along the Central American gyre, gyre. West to east flow is pulling it to the east. So no, it's not that misinformation and garbage that you're seeing out there. Sorry, I get kind of heated with that, but this is science. This is meteorology, and I'm trying to give you guys the best information. Please be safe. Please take this storm seriously. Please prepare. We're going to be live on this channel starting on Monday. We got you guys covered. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Really appreciate you all. Hit that subscribe button if you're new. Share this with your friends. And we will catch you next time.